The Adelphi men's lacrosse team is set to play in the NCAA Division II National Championship with the third best defense in the country this season. So we preview that national title game with Ryan Butler from the defensive side of the ball. Uh, first team all-conference performer in the NE10 this year. Uh, Ryan, congratulations on the success that you've had and that the team has had. Um, how does it feel to know that you're about to walk out on an NFL stadium and play for a national title? You know, uh, it, it's surreal. Honestly, you know, I've been I've been looking forward to this for the last five years, you know, and it's kind of just crazy that it's actually happening. Uh, why is it happening? What's clicked for this bunch? Um, I guess it's just I mean, to put it on something, I guess it's just all the, the hard work and dedication that we've had for the last five months, you know, uh, overcoming a lot of adversity, you know, um, trying to overcome it by spending extra hours on the field, you know, practicing till 10 p.m. at night spending countless hours in the uh, in the film room going over stuff, going over offenses and everything like that. So, you know, all of that together, you know, I think it's a big reason uh, for our success. Some of that might answer my next question, but I'm curious what about you guys makes you a stingy defense? Like, why can't people score on you guys? Um, I think, again, uh, to say it again, the, the countless hours spent in the film room, you know, on the field, you know, it plays a major role. Uh, having a coach such as Volpe, who, you know, spends even more time on us uh, trying to pinpoint specific things that certain offenses do. Um, having a kid like Dylan Renner, you know, player of the year, you know, big man in net, you know, we can always trust him outside with all the outside shots that we're giving up for him. You know, he says before every game, he goes, give me the outside shots, you know, I'll be there for him, you know, and I believe him, you know, and, and it shows, definitely shows. I was going to say, tell me a little bit about the presence that he is back there. And, you know, he was named national defense or he was named national player of the year. Yep, national um, player of the year. Why? Like what makes him special? You know, no, I think no one deserves it more than him. Uh, the work, the work ethic that he puts in um, is just, it's unheard of. You know, he spends even more hours off the field outside of practice, you know, whether it be with, um, with our defensive coach, who's also a goalie coach. Um, you know, he works, uh, tremendously. And he's also a little bit crazy. So, you know, that also plays a role, you know, playing behind him. It, it's very comforting, very comforting. Well, I see a little bit crazy. You know, I, you see it in the games, you see it in the film. People have asked him uh, when he makes big saves, he stares the guy down. You know, it's scared. It scares me too. You know, even in practice, he plays at such a high intensity. You know, I, I get a little nervous and he's on my side. <laughs> <laughs> What is a, what's the key? And and again, like a lot of it, I'm sure is film work and, and the hours of preparation, but, but what's the key to being a really good close defender? Like when you want to shut a guy down, when you want to cause a turnover, when you want to get a stop, um, what's the most critical thing that you need to be successful there? Um, I'd say the, the most critical thing that we're going to need is knowing the person that you're playing and knowing the offense that they run, because if you know a specific offensive set, and you know the specific way that your player is going to dodge mostly, whether that you see it on film, you see it through scouts. Um, knowing what they're going to do kind of gives you a little bit more of an advantage, you know, because being a defenseman, you know, you're you're coming in and playing against him. You don't know what he's going to do. You have to read and react. But having that little like advantage of knowing what he might do and what he the tendencies that he normally does, you know, it does help a little bit by preventing him from uh, scoring goals, getting good shots off and, you know, uh, trying to cause turnovers and stuff. Tell me how you learned that, because um, before we started to talk, I, I just Googled Ryan Butler lacrosse and an article pops up that talks about how your high school had had such a great season because of the 20 goals you'd scored. <laughs> and I went, wait a minute, what? Uh, and I know you were a midfielder when you first got to college as well. So yeah. tell me your process to go from that to having a poll every day and not just that, but being one of the best ones in the country. Um, so I guess uh, to keep it short, um, my senior year, uh, I was a midfielder for Seaford, uh, an offensive midi, defensive midi, and I played a little bit of pole as well. And I, uh, I tore my ACL uh, coming in. So I came back in the fall, practiced for a little bit. Um, and the first game that we played, that I played as a college lacrosse player was against Lenore Ryan. And I'm coming in, I'm playing the guy, I'm a little bit nervous, and he cooks me down the alley, cooks me scores. I didn't see the field again. The next game, uh, my defensive coach, uh, Volpe, goes, here, take a pole. And ever since then, I started playing pole for the next uh, next four years. Why does it fit you? Why, um, why does it fit? Because um, I, I I grew up uh, playing on my travel team. I did play long pole, you know, here and there. And uh, for my town team, I played midfield because, you know, I played where they needed me the most, which is, I guess, at the midfield. And I guess it fits me best because I'm I'm pretty comfortable with it. You know, I got used to it. Once they gave me the pole full time, you know, I put in extra hours trying to become comfortable with it again because it has been a little bit. But, you know, um, being able to be back to, I guess, my home roots, 
what I played when I was younger, you know, it's comforting. And I felt uh, pretty confident with doing so. Let's talk about Lenore Ryan a little bit. Um, that's the, the only team that stands between you and your ultimate goal here. Yep. It's the second time you will have played them this season. Yep. Um, they're one of the few teams that has beaten you. Uh, yep. What do you remember about February 24th and going on the road to play them the first time? Um, I remember just, you know, it's our first game of the year, you know, returning national champs. They're a great team. You know, we're getting we're getting ready. You know, it's our second game of the year. So we we still we're still trying to figure stuff out. But, you know, being able to, like, hold a team to that least amount of goals. But uh, we were pretty we weren't we were happy uh, because of the goals that we held them to. But we were pretty upset about the loss. But it gave us time to, I guess, learn, uh, make some personnel changes that we need, um, change some things about our defense that we could become better with. So I guess that loss was one of the the better things that have happened to us because we were able to change and adapt um, in the next three months in preparation. Even though we didn't know we were going to play them, we kind of had a feeling that if we did, we we are going to have to change something. So, I mean, I remember like a month ago, I spoke to Dylan and, and he even said then we're a completely different team now than we were at the beginning of the season. Um, where are you guys different? How have you grown? Um, we've grown just, you know, um, with our with the way that our defense runs. Um, we try to change change drills that we've done. We try to change the perspective that we look while playing other people. Because um, we're, we're, I say we're a pretty fundamentally sound defense. Um, we slide very well. We know where our two and three slides are. And that was just something that we had to work on for the next five months. So, you know, uh, in, in preparation-wise, uh, we did make a lot of changes in that aspect. But a lot of our core uh, core values, core fundamentals have stayed the same. It's just a little things that we had to tweak. Um. Uh, walk me through the environment. Like what's different this week? Has it felt different? Um, is there just a, a different kind of feel and vibe? You know, um, it is, it is a different vibe completely, but we tried not uh, to let that get to our heads. You know, we, we're trying to treat it as just another game, but it is our last game of the year. Last game as a team. So, you know, that's always sitting in the back of our head, but we try not to think about it. Um, we just try to like simulate um, things that's going to translate to the last game of the year. Like we have speakers on our sideline, playing the crowd noise, you know, trying to get ready and get our mental ready more than our physical, because, you know, it does play a bigger role, I think, mentally than physically. Is this the biggest stadium you've ever played in? Yeah, 100 percent. Biggest stadium. And I'm very excited for it. It's funny, like when you oh. talk to minor league baseball players, they'll always say when you run out on the field in your big league debut, it's like, look up in the crowd the first time and then don't do it again or just don't yeah. look up into the crowd at all. Um, yeah, exactly. I don't plan on looking do? at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how do you do that? Um, when we, we were practicing there um, over the weekend, so I'm going to try to soak it in there. But, you know, once once we get on the field for game day, you know, you hear the crowd, but, you know, you got to focus on the main goal and focus on your team, um, your responsibilities, instead of getting into the crowd and all the extra stuff that's involved. So, you know, just being able to focus on what's in front of you and what you can control, like the crowd, you can't control what they say, control how loud they are. That's their job. You can't let that affect you during your play. Um, what would it feel like to win? Have you thought about it? Oh my God. I mean, I, again, I try not to think about it, but <laughs> it's always in the back of the, it's always in the back of my head. You know, it's just, it's just the feeling of accomplishment is something that we've been looking for as a program for a very long time. So I guess for me and a lot of other kids, it'll probably be like one of the best highlights of my life, you know, cause you know, there's nothing better than winning a national championship with 50 of your best friends. So, you know, it's, it's very, very exciting. Uh, I, I asked this to to Karen Hoyser when we spoke the other day. Um, it's not just you guys. It's also the ladies in the final four on their side. Yeah. So what's it mean to Adelphi that you've got two lacrosse programs that have the opportunity to both win national titles at the same time? You know, it's uh, one, it's crazy. It's honestly crazy, you know, because both of us, we've both overcame a lot of obstacles to get where we are right now. And if we were both to win it, you know, Adelphi, um, I know they won it, I think, 2018, I want to say. Nin so 19. 19. Yeah. It's been a couple of years for them. And, you know, for us, it's been since 2011. So, you know, if we both end up winning it, you know, fingers crossed, uh, it'll be a pretty awesome experience. Ryan, uh, congratulations on the success thus far and uh, certainly best of luck ending it the way you guys want to. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.